This is the story of the lightning gun bug, which speedrunners such as Muty here used to kill enemies through walls and over huge distances. Let's take a slightly speculative trip back in time. The year is 1996 and you're a programmer for id Software. You're working on the Thunderbolt, Quake's most powerful weapon which lets you cut through hordes of enemies like butter. Except that it doesn't. Due to the weapon's linear beam, enemies can stand to one side of you, blocking your path, yet still safely out of range of your lightning. You resolve to fix this by giving the beam used to scan for enemies a width, rather than just being a line. If the beam is the same width as the player, you'll have a much easier time cutting down hordes. Due to Quake's limited box tracing abilities, you can't trace the wide beam directly. Instead, you decide to trace two lines in addition to the main beam, each 16 units either side. This distance is close enough that no enemies can slip through, yet far enough away that it'll eliminate blocking. You fire up your text editor and get to work modifying the function that applies damage from the lightning gun. You need two new beams, one either side of the existing one. Easy enough, you think. I'll just duplicate the existing damage beam, but shift it to the left and right a little. The function takes the start and end points for the main beam. You start by subtracting the start point from the end point, which gives a vector pointing forwards. Next, you flatten it so that there's no up component, and rotate 90 degrees. Normalize, and multiply by 16 to get a vector of the desired length. Finally, you duplicate the code that applies the damage from the main beam, offsetting by the vector we just calculated. Unfortunately for you, but fortunately for speedrunners, this code doesn't work. There are two issues, one you may spot if you're familiar with Quake C, and one is to do with geometry. Pause now if you want to try and work it out yourself. The first issue is that the normalize function does not work in place. Instead it returns the normalized vector, which this code ignores. Instead you should write the result to F. The second issue relates to the rotation. It looks right, swapping the Y coordinate for the X, and X coordinate for minus Y does indeed do a 90 degree rotation but assigning to the x-coordinate means the original value is lost when it is needed for setting the y-coordinate. Instead, a temporary variable should be used to save the old value. So what does this code actually do? The bungled rotation means that the beam offset, f, is dependent only on the distance the main beam travels in the y-axis. If you shoot directly along the x-axis, the offset will be zero, but wiggle left to right and the beams grow further apart. For each unit the main beam travels in the y-axis, the side beams travel 16 times as far, diagonally, in the x and y axes. There's no limit to how far apart the beams can get. As the main beam's y-axis increases, the side beams travel diagonally across the map. Should any enemies get in the way, they will be killed. In this case, killing the Vol really triggers an animation sequence that normally holds the player up at the end of the level. Speedrunners use this trick to cut several seconds off the finish time for this map. I want to caveat this story by saying that I don't know for sure that the side beams were intended to prevent enemy blocking, but it seems like the most likely explanation. Let me know in the comments if you have an alternate theory. There are many other places where this bug has been used, and a lot more to say about its history. Connor from Quake Speedruns Explained has made a brilliant video covering this aspect of the story, so check it out to learn more.